What's up, everybody? The Book of Boba Fett. That's what's up. The newest episode just dropped a couple of days ago. Again, because of work stuff, I couldn't really quite re uh, review it as soon as it was out. But I, I always say, better late than never. Either way, I love this episode. I really do. I mean, I still think episode one of the show is definitely the weakest. But I'm not really sure if episode two or three of the show so far are my favorites. I mean, they're just they're just so good. And what's really interesting to me is that I said it this last time. I mean, I've been saying this ever since my first episode recap, but I'll say it again. I'm a much bigger fan of the flashbacks of seeing Boba Fett. Um, sort of after uh, the Sarlacc pit being trained by the Tuscans, living with the Tuscans, and, and all that, I'm, I'm a much bigger fan of that side of the show than I am uh, the current modern day stuff, present day. Again, I, I would say this, when you say present day in Star Wars, I mean, it's all relative, but either way. So, for this episode in particular, they they went in a completely different approach than they did last week. Last week it was just like five ten minutes of present day stuff, and then the the entire episode, the rest of the episode was a flashback, which I loved. But for this episode, they went in a different direction. For, they pretty much based the majority of this episode in the pre the quote unquote present day of uh, Tatooine, and. Uh, I was like, okay, uh, what are we doing here? At one point, I was like, oh no, we, we got pretty much all of this version of Boba Fett's backstory in the last episode. Does this mean we're not going to have any more flashbacks to his time with the Tuscans? And thankfully, we got to see him with the Tuscans again, which I'm a big fan of. I like that. But the majority of the episode takes place in the current uh modern day stuff of uh, Boba Fett and uh, it introduces these uh, these new biker gangs which I'm to be honest I'm a little bit split on as far as whether or not I liked those guys um, they're definitely an interesting angle I mean it's I, I love how Boba Fett was essentially kind of asked by the the, the water merchant to uh, to take care of these guys because that's pretty much what previous daimyos, I, I guess now I know how to say that word, that's what the, his predecessors did. They took care of these sort of civil disturbances to keep, uh, to keep the rich richer and the poor poorer. And Boba Fett pretty much does the opposite. He's like, like you, 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 you guys should be, should be working, you guys should, should, have, should have a job. And they're like, there are no jobs here. Okay, so come work for me. You, I pay you, you do what I tell you. And they just immediately uh, immediately go for it. And I liked it. I, I liked that part. And I, I think it's really, I love the idea that they keep using droid body parts to modify themselves. There's that girl with the, the, the droid arm, the guy with the droid eye and whatnot. They, that they modified their body. They're basically cyborgs at this point. They're, they're cyborgs that use droid parts to modify their, their bodies and replace certain limbs that maybe they lost at a gang fight. Not too big of a fan of their bikes. They, they look too... I'm sorry. They look too much like real-world motorbikes slash Vespas. They look too Earth-like for my taste to be in Star Wars. And I get that they try to make them look a bit more sci-fi-ish, but it just didn't work for me. And also, they, they look really really clean and shiny and it really feels out of place in Tatooine where everything's dirty and filled with sand and beaten down and broken it, it doesn't have that lived in world live, lived in feel that Star Wars is universally famous for so I'm not a big fan of how their bikes look and especially since they've been a, a street gang for who knows how long there is no way they were able to keep their bikes this clean uh, for as long as they have. I, even if they just bought them. You take these things out for one ride in the, in the June Seas and it's just, 
they're covered in sand because you know sand is coarse and rough and irritating and it gets everywhere. Uh, so th so that's uh, that's a little bit of a nitpick about these guys. Uh, I, but then obviously my favorite part about the about the show comes up, which is the flashbacks stuff. And well, this this new flashback was relatively sh on the shorter side, shorter than all the other ones. I did still enjoy it. I, I liked Boba Fett going back uh, to, I think it was Moss Espa, or maybe even... No, it was Moss Eisley. He went back to Moss Eisley to speak to the uh, um, the Pike Syndicates, and yes, I finally got confirmation. These are the Pikes. They mentioned them by name in this episode. I wasn't sure last episode. They are definitely, definitively the Pikes. I did enjoy seeing a cameo of the Amy Sedaris character walking with her pit droids in the background. I love that. Um, but yeah, he goes into the uh, the conversation with the Pike, and I and I I just love I just love the idea that the the guy he was talking to he was trying to sound he was trying to convi sound convincing while also doing this. You know, if if you know anything about well anything, you, you know that, that that's basically just um, you know. It's it's something to do with alcohol. I don't drink, obviously, but it's something to do with alcohol. You stir it around to make mix it and make sure that the drink tastes better. You can enjoy the uh, uh, the, the buzz much better. But I mean, I just love the fact that the, the character was just doing this while talking to Boba Fett. That that's a great character uh, thing that I really enjoyed about it. And obviously, uh, sadly for me and for Boba Fett, he goes back to the village. After thinking he secured a um, a deal with the Pikes, or the beginnings of a deal with the Pikes, and then the entire village is burned to the ground, and the chief, and right next to him, the guy that trained him, essentially, they're all dead. And obviously he disposes them in the way that uh, the Tusken Raiders are, are used to. He, he burns their bodies, and vows revenge against uh, the Nikto Swoop Gang uh, that... That killed him, obviously, and I mean, this could be just early specula speculation on my part, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be eventually revealed that um, the Pikes actually are behind it. The Pikes actually send the uh, the Nikto Swoop Gang to, uh, to to kill all the Tuscans. That, that's just a theory I have. I mean, it could be true. It makes sense, but. Who knows? We'll just have to uh, wait and see on that. But I mean, as soon as I saw the look on Boba Fett's face in that moment, I was like, "Yeah, these guys are gonna pay. These guys are gonna die." And funny thing, have you noticed that the this no Nikto Swoop Gang? They are nowhere to be found in the present day of the show, the mo the modern stuff. Kind of makes you wonder, doesn't it? So I'm guessing Boba Fett already took care of them. Then I was speaking of, speaking of. Um, the present day, uh, Boba Fett's flashback sleep is essentially interrupted by uh, Black Crescent, in which I did give some criticism last episode that he just he basically showed up and did nothing, and it felt like Boba Fett almost didn't recognize him. Not really the case in this episode. He he went out. He tried to kill Boba Fett. Now, obviously, you're not gonna kill the main character of the show. I do have a kind of a bit of a nitpick about Boba Fett himself is that he keeps getting his butt whooped by other people. No, uh, granted, Black Crescenton is a a Wookiee and B, he's Black Crescenton. I mean, the guy survived an encounter with Obi Wan Kenobi and lived to tell the tale and got a scar out of it. So yeah, he went toe to toe with Chewbacca the Wookiee. Okay, so it's Black Crescenton. He's one of the toughest, meanest baddest bounty hunters in the Star Wars galaxy and, and a former uh, gladiatorial fighter. So it makes sense that Boba Fett wouldn't be, wouldn't be able to take him down, but still, Boba Fett really gets his ass kicked all over this series. Now granted, Din Djarin also got his butt whooped in, on the show multiple times by a lot of other characters, but he always did manage to beat them in the end. So I'm guessing they're just setting up. I, I, I'm just a little bit tired of the trope that Boba Fett gets his ass kicked and he has to, uh, essentially, he has to wait for Fennec Shan to save him. So, I mean, that's just a bit of a minor rant. But obviously, then he's, he's been saved by 
the biker gang that he just recruited. And I loved the fact that even though they put up a fight, Black Crescenter basically mows through them like they're paper soldiers. Even though you have these droid modifications and, and these weapons, and uh, he's got a gaffy stick stuck in his back while he's fighting them. That's how powerful this guy is. And, uh, yeah, so I really enjoyed the, the Black Crescenton fight. It's, it was nice to see the twins again. And I just loved the fact that, okay, they gave him a gift. And they gave him a freaking Rancor. That's something I, I, I pointed, I want, I think I want, I want to say I pointed out last episode. Boba Fett does not have a Rancor. He doesn't have something to keep the people afraid. He wants to keep having the people respect him. A Rancor is a good way to do that. And I just thought they brought back, they actually brought... Danny freaking Trejo as the uh, the Rancor handler. I just love it. I mean, it kind of, it's kind of a no-brainer when you really think about it. Robert Rodriguez is a director, one of the main directors and one of the main story-involved people on this show. So it makes sense that he would actually bring Danny Trejo into the show. I mean, it was just a matter of time, really. But I just loved seeing Danny Trejo. Danny Trejo is a part of the Star Wars universe now. He's canon. In Star Wars, and I just love it, and I, I just love that how they showed us so much stuff we didn't know about the Tusken Raiders in the last episode. They, they're developing the Tusken Raiders as characters. They're also introducing a lot of stuff we didn't know about Rancors, and I just love, I just love the show so much. I mean, yeah, uh, then it, it kind of cuts into my, my, and as my camera decides to start uh, getting all fizzy uh, for some reason, uh, I, I desperately need a, need a new one, but th then obviously, uh, fitting that it, it happens just now, but then it, it cuts to my least favorite part about this episode, which may be the reason why I think episode two was better. Then there's the, the chase scene in the, uh, the thing. It was like, watching it, it felt like, am I really watching this? Is this really a part of Star Wars? It was kind of weird to me to see this thing as... A part of Star Wars. It's just, it, 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 I don't know. It did, just didn't feel Star Warsy enough for my taste. Maybe it was all the cliches the, that they threw in uh, the, this, to this uh, chase scene. The going through a painting, the almost hitting uh, pedestrians. I, I, I didn't quite much care for the for the chase scene, but I still loved the episode and, and I loved what they're setting up. That obviously the mayor. The mayor bounced, and the mayor was not to be trusted to begin with. And uh, I, I can't, I'm finding it a little bit, a little bit hard to focus with the, uh, the camera fading out. But, uh, yeah. Not really the best part of the episode, the, uh, the, the chase scene. But it's still, it's a very, very solid episode. And uh, I really enjoy it. I, I'm enjoying where this show is going right now. And uh, I can't believe we, we only got like three episodes. And we were about... I think it's six episodes, yeah. Or maybe eight. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, we're about halfway through the season. And, uh, I'm just loving it. I'm loving this season. And I'm loving the show. And, uh, I can't wait to see more. Don't really have much of anything else to say about the show. Except, I wish we have more, uh, more of the flashback stuff. I, I hope the flashbacks stuff isn't over. And, uh, yeah. Book, book of it. I wasn't quite sure of the quote unquote present day stuff uh, initially but now I'm actually starting to get really really interested in, in the way and the direction the story is going so uh, yeah that, that, that's that, that's it that's all I can say for now and uh, I gotta go and uh, try to fix my camera and maybe hopefully get a new one so uh, see you guys some other time uh, goodbye hello again everybody I really hope you enjoyed this video cause I really enjoyed making it so, if you like what you've seen here, please remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe for more awesome content like this. So, until next time guys, I'll see you guys next time.